Uh, this is a long ass video. Oh. I edited it down. Oh. But to be fair to the woman who created this video, uh, she was very thoughtful about a lot of the stuff that she said. And there were some good points that she made. And so if you want, you can go check out her video and see which parts you guys agree with or don't agree with. Don't let us inform you. So the link is below so you can go watch it without our input yet. But I'll play portions that I thought were interesting that I want to talk about with Preach. And then we'll just kind of go from there. Lonely single men are on the rise due to higher dating standards. <laughs> Oh my God, it was like a mating call or something. But anyway, saw this and immediately looked it up because I was like, is this real? Maybe this isn't real. Come to find out, or as we say in Wolof, fake on their wall. These articles were published literally like a day or two before. So turns out this is actually true. Although as always, there's more to the story, but this is all research from the Pew Research Center. I think a place that most people find trustworthy. And when I was looking at the research article, I didn't expect it to be as long as it was because it was honestly very broad strokes, but it was mostly talking about how, yeah, just statistically, you're just really worse off if you're unpartnered, especially if you are an unpartnered male. I'll link not just unpartnered, partnered people, but unpartnered straight men and why they are unpartnered and the effects it'll have on their health, mental, physical well-being, all of that. And how, and speaking in binaries, how for women, it's actually like healthier apparently, <laughs> or, you know, them not to have a, a husband or children weighing them down. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So if you even know, like, I don't know, maybe a bit about feminism. You've probably heard the saying, a woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. Fish don't need bicycles, just like women don't need men. In this time period, especially, and not that this is the first time it's ever happened, but time when we started realizing, oh, what do I really need a guy for besides if I like to have sex. And it's not to say that the dudes didn't deserve the kind of energy we were bringing because I'm gonna get to it. As I mentioned from the Pew Research, they were pointing out how men that are unpartnered, there's just, there's just diminishing of your quality of life, I guess, overall. And for women, it seems to be the opposite. In contrast, women benefit far more from being alone. According to Professor Paul Dolan, a happiness expert and professor of behavioral science at the London School of Economics, the quote, healthiest and happiest population subgroup are women who never married or had children. Article that she's quoting to support the idea that uh, women are better off by themselves yeah. is by some scientist named Paul Dolan. Okay. okay. And he reads this public available data and he comes to the conclusion, and I quote, if you're a man, you should probably get married. If you're a woman, don't bother. And when you hear it, it sounds like it rings true. So you assume it is. Let me tell you, I wish homegirl would have just done another Google search because uh, this guy's been debunked already. So there's a Vox article that was great. And yeah. basically this Vox writer, let me just make sure I get her name right. <laughs> yeah. Kelsey Piper. And she got an article that says, a new book says married women are miserable. Don't believe it. Okay, shout outs to you, lady. And basically she goes on to debunk the fact that this guy, when he was quoting the statistics, did so incorrectly. Um, and he had to retract afterwards what he'd said in his book because he admits that he'd quoted this stuff incorrectly. I hear this all the time. I could do bad all myself. And you hear these studies and we're like, women are happier about it. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Gray Kimbrough, he was an economist at the American University of Public Affairs who uses a survey that who uses the survey data that this Paul Dolan used. And basically what this guy realized is that I'm no happiness expert and don't have strong ideological feelings about whether or not everyone should be getting married or not. But I have done a ton of research with the American Time Use Survey, which he's used to base his statement on, and the claims felt weird to me. First of all, there's a statement that when married woman's spouse is not in the room, she's fucking miserable. I know that this information isn't included in the ADIS, so I reached out to him. He has since retracted this statement and will correct it in his book. The citation in the second paragraph crucially does not say that there are no benefits to w women marrying, only that there are not as large as benefits to men. Meaning, and when I talk oftentimes about this topic, the way that men and women have to bridge this gap, because we only have each other. People were like, why should I? Women are thriving by themselves. And I'm like, no, you're not. This is just made of bullshit. Like, stop saying this stuff because you're going off faulty information and you're building your whole fucking life view. 
You're going into these relationships thinking like, oh, shit's going to be sweet on the other side when it's not. And you're doing it based off information that's untrue. People are selling you this stuff because it appeals to you, right? I can understand. Someone tells you, you don't need men. You can live forever by yourself. You want to listen to that person because it's empowering. The same way red pill people say a bunch of that stuff to these young men and it's empowering to them. Fuck these bitches. You just get this money. You won't get it. Like that's, that's that side. This is the other side of the delusion where it's just like, we don't need others. We don't need these. It's not true. Every statistical number shows that you're going to do worse off if you're by yourself. The only difference is women do slightly worse. So why are you celebrating that? This is akin to two people fucking drowning and one looking at the other and be like, well, you're drowning faster. Bitch, you all go die. Why are you concerned about the fact that he's drowning a little bit faster? That's going to be you soon too. We're so like men versus women. We don't realize, like I say this all the time. It's, it's not about women are wrong or men are wrong or whatever the fuck it is. Yo, niggas, we only got each other. Well, if men are not going to change, it's tough. They're the only men you have. You're going to go to a different planet I ain't never fucking... You getting some alien dick I, I don't know about? If women are going to be like this, fuck. Where are you going to get your ladies? Like, do you guys not realize there's only these two genders? Oh, uh, hold on. 75. Whoa. Women. What'd you get what I'm trying to say? There's only these two sexes, right? Thank you. We only have each other. So when I hear this narrative constantly being portrayed, I'm like... First off, it's mostly like young delusional women who are saying this stuff. Yeah. Okay. And secondly... It's just like, go ask the old people by themselves. <laughs> go ask them. Why do you think remarriage always happens in the latter years? How many times do old people get remarried? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Because they understand what it's like to grow shit, old. That, that, that alone shit is fucked up. And not, not even like, not being old, just there. You're alone in your apartment, you just, yeah, yo, it's fucked up. Yeah. You could deny it and be like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, until the shit gets lonely. Everybody, everybody, without everybody that I've seen that was talking about, I'm good alone, I'm good alone, I'm good alone, that was cis, an heterosexual, that was a woman, eventually they're like, yeah, but it'd be nice. <laughs> eventually they're like, yeah, but it'd be nice. But I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You repeat that shit so much that I'm really starting to think, are you trying to convince yourself? Because I heard you the first 54 times that you said it. But now you're like, I want this, I want this. I'm good, 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 I'm good. I swear I'm good. I'm really good. I'm good. I'm good. And then the loneliness come, it sucks. It sucks. Sucks for men too, by the way. I don't know about you guys, but wallets have always been an issue for me. And that's where today's sponsor, Exter, comes into play. What I love about this wallet, the design, the fact that it's efficient. Uh, I stick all the cards that I need inside here. And then if at any point I want to pull them out, I only need to sift through my thing. I just like this, poop. And then I know which card it is. I just pull out the card real sleek, push it back in, boom, simple. And it doesn't fall out. As you can see right here, doesn't matter how much I shake. Honestly, it feels like one of the Batman toys. Is that cool? Extra also has some cool accessories that involve using an app on your phone. You can activate this tracker and the tracker stays with it. So when you're traveling, this could be a godsend. And there's many times this kind of technology would have saved my eyes. So amazing design, amazing functionality at amazing prices. And what's more, if you follow the link in the description below, right now they got a good old Christmas sale going. So you can get up to 40% off. That's right. You can save some money, you feel me? Get yourself one of these and treat yourself. There's no reason why I need to go with these big bulky wallets with, or maybe if it's not for you, you know, maybe there's a special man you know, in your life. Ladies, if you guys are thinking of what to get your man, you know what I mean, for this holiday season, this is it. Every dude I've shown it to so far is like, I got to get me one of those. So don't hesitate, guys. Use the link in the description below and get yourself one, too. Yeah. And, and, and it's important because, you know, sometimes these video essays on YouTube do like these video think pieces that make it seem like everything's so well researched and thought out. And like, it's not. It's a not. lot of these people are operating off faulty information. They read a single book and they're like, I understand feminism. I got like, the truth. I just don't buy it. And, and, and I'm not saying this woman's intention lies. Not that. It's that oftentimes, even I have this bias, I imagine, is that when you have information that confirms the truth that's convenient to you or aligns with your worldview, you just run with it. Yeah. Just be careful. Whether it's us, whether it's her, whether it's anybody else on YouTube, understand just because they say this and they cite something, 
You have to look beyond the citation and be like, well, where did this study actually come from? What did they actually, oh, what did they actually did say? Did they read the study properly? Your main point, which is that women are better off not getting married, is just untrue. Your life expectancy drops. The amount of money that you make drops. Your happiness levels drop. According to all the metrics that we have out there, yeah. we report that these things are lower for unpartnered people. The way the, the world works, unfortunately, the way the world works, you have to be too. Yep groceries having a roof over your hand kids raising kids it's better with two motherfuckers it's just like that but hey also friends sound great as an idea when you're young Until as you get us. older people other have kids they have their own families they move out of state to go live with other people it's like this idea like you're gonna always hold your friend group and you guys are always gonna be close and everything's gonna be great is not nearly as true as you get older in age. Those phases start to fade. Shit so, change. Absolutely. People got lives. Shit change. People start to get kids. Mm -hmm. People start to, you know, handle their business. That person was free to help you out when that person was free to help you out. But check this. How many times do you hear girls complain? Oh, all my fucking friends are getting married. Yep. Yep. How many times do they do that? Yep. And why do they complain about that? Because they ain't got nobody to chill. They ain't got nobody to be around. They ain't got nobody. It starts to feel very fucking lonely. You know, it's always funny. Those women who are like, I could do bad all my stuff. I could do bad all my stuff. That they find a man. What they like. I mean, I, 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 and I was just like, and then I was like you back then, and I hear my sisters, I hear them, I hear my sister, I can do this, but when you find the love of your life, it's just so like you go back home. <laughs> You just go back home and he's there 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 are all these dating apps coming out as well. And with dating apps, it's just numbers and screens, just tons and tons and tons of people. You just, it's kind of like a little cyber dating buffet. You just click through left, right, left, right. People almost stop being people and are just the pictures and the brief bit that you might gather from them. We need to be able to be honest with ourselves about how our feelings are hurt, that a lot of the dudes we know, it's not just men you date. Dads, brothers, uncles, cousins, best friends, gay or straight, queer, whatever. If you're socialized as a boy, that socialization ends up having a lot more to do with how in control can you be? How dominant can you be? How much of a quote man can you be? Then how are you as a person? Um, how do you feel? Uh, who are you? Who are you discovering yourself to be? How do you choose to express yourself? Mm. Let's talk. You know, it's always interesting the way people try to define the male experience and how not accurate. Like, I think when women describe the male experience, I'm like, what? Oh my God, you think you know, but. You know what it makes me think of? It's like when dudes talk about ladies on a lot of these podcasts, they'd be like these fucking whores on Instagram just DMing thousands of men, fucking sp spreading the P.O.Y. for every. Like they always go to this caricature that's yeah. just so extreme. Yeah. And then these ladies do the same thing, which is like these guys are emotionally stunted and unable to speak about their feelings ever. And they just want to be in control and dominate. And meanwhile, I'm just playing fucking Smash Bros with my niggas, just having a good time laughing about shit. Like, chill. It's not that deep. Hey, nigga, who gonna be dominated? Like, I, 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 w the way women define male spaces, they think, like, we're all just, like, Trump just fucking... So I grabbed her by the pussy, right? And I was like, what? You guys have no idea what male spaces look like. And the more I hear women talk about it, the more I recognize they yeah, don't I was like, know. Oh, okay, you don't know shit about fuck. You it's don't. fine. You don't. And the second thing you... How are you as a person? Niggas don't want to be around that energy. Not a single one. If a girl ever came in with that kind of... I was like, you can leave now. So, what are you feeling on the inside? Oh, my God. Isn't that so emo Just draining? So. No, they don't say that. What? 
What you thinking? Oh my god! I fucking hit you, right? I hit you with that shit. I hit you with that shit, right? I hit you with that shit, yeah. And we have this rise that we see of this manosphere incels, all this sort of stuff, retaliating against this independence, you know, because you see the pendulums. That, that's an extreme reaction. But what can we learn from that? And what I think we can learn from that is that it's a lot deeper than just thinking men are trash. In my opinion, my opinion. Speaking a frustration into the world about how difficult it is to not only connect with men, understand men, vibe with men, but even tolerate them at times. Like that's wild to think about. You have us doing all manner of emotional labor once all of us started realizing we could do, you know, bad all by ourselves and really were committed to that and saw the fruits of our labor and all of that stuff, no matter how capitalist pink washed it was, in my opinion, my opinion, brought about this even bigger chasm because not only were men then already kind of in that camp of not really being emotionally intelligent or being required to be sex economics, the man works and women hold power as sex and give it to men depending on how much money that, ugh, like that weird messed up mentality of all men have to offer is what's on the outside, the physical. You know what kills me? Women always talk about how emotionally intelligent they are. And I think they think that just because they talk about their emotions, they're more emotionally intelligent. But my experience has generally been that women barely can see their own behavior or their own shortcomings emotionally, which is why we get therapy. And which is why the reason why we don't talk off the time because the way sometimes you guys react is messed up. You know, sometimes we don't talk about shit because your re reaction is gonna be fucked up. You assume a lot of shit because you assume that you're emotionally more stable and intel intelligent. So if I come up with some shit, the backlash is gonna be real. You, yeah. you think I wanna deal with a backlash as a man? I shut the fuck up, it's easier for me. But women sometimes talk themselves into circles about emotions and they think they're being so profound, but they're just talking into the air and saying a lot of nothing. And then sometimes you'll point out, like, you don't realize that you're physically a bitch. They're like, what? It's like, you got all this time to dissect every single thought I have, but you don't even notice that you be hitting people all the time when you get frustrated. <laughs> you got all this outward time to be like this, this. Did you know that half of all physical altercations when it comes to marital and relationship related stuff, is initiated by women. But if you ask 95% of women if they ever done something like, nah. Most women I know, and this is just a course completely anecdotal, love talking about emotions. But it doesn't mean that they have a deep understanding of them. It doesn't mean that they're emotionally mature enough to really understand the whole gravitas, everything. Now I will credit women that think they're much more open about these things, but being open is not enough. There's a lot of introspection that has to happen beyond that. and. When I hear ladies talk, they sound like they're the masters of emotion. No, no, you're the masters of talking about them. Doesn't mean you've mastered them. That's why if you look at the big five personality traits, women hate rate way higher when it comes to uh, neuroticism. You guys will display everything. Don't mean you have a good control or handle over them no. or a deep understanding of them. You just like talking about them. And it's really when it's, and you're good at talking about it when it happens to you. Even when you hear women talk about the exes, I swear on my mother's life, every woman has been in a relationship with a narcissist. Every woman. Even though they're like less than 1% of the population, every woman's ex-boyfriend is a narcissist. They got some kind of mental health disorder. Every single one of them. And they're not even being hyperbolic, they're serious. I one time told her, she dated three narcissists. Do you understand? That the common denominator? No, no, no. Do you understand the odds of that possibility? Yo, that's fucked up. Like, bitch, sign up for the lottery, because you're going to win, apparently. Yeah, well, with those odds, yeah, absolutely. You need three narcissists in a row? In a row. It's like... I don't know what's wrong with me. I just attract them. Jesus fucking... Really? Are you sure? Lady. Come on, bro. Like, they, they do this, all this outward projection of, like, mental health stuff and analyzing emotions and he gaslit me and there was manipulation involved and all this other stuff. And you ask them, like, when have you engaged that? Uh, never. You've never manipulated a man? No. All I'm trying to say is I can look at my own past dating behavior and acknowledge. There have been times I've been manipulative. There's been times I've maybe 
misrepresented facts or whatever it might be, lied, go ahead. But you ask them, like, yo, when it comes to your own behavior, do you see it? And a lot of them be like, whoa. And you ask them, are you a master of emotions? These things, they got a PhD in fucking feelings, bro. But and, and no, they just, they oftentimes, they feel everything and they really think it's the truth. That is the truth. I felt it, so it happens. Bro. Yeah, okay. But let's see how that happened. I'm not going to say what you did for that to happen because that's victim blaming. But let's just dissect how that happened. And we came to this.